everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create this adorable rat in a cup. It's like so perfect for 2020 because it's going to be the year of the rat. So if you're celebrating that, this is going to be great painting for that. And he's really fun. We're going to be covering gray fur and flowers. Now, we're going to be working from this photo and I'm going to be breaking down the process of that and making it a lot simpler. If you check the description down below, there's going to be a link to our website. And on the website is a grid reference that's numbered and set up for you already. And also there's a traceable. Because whether you're ready to maybe start drawing it in via grid or whether you're, you're ready to use a traceable, both of those are there for you. And they're both totally awesome options. Just wherever you're at in your art journey. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me with these mad plans of painting from photos live on YouTube by switching around one of our many, many cameras. We have like four or five of them and he switches between all of them and zooms in on the action. Make sure you can see every part of the painting process so you can create it for yourself at home. The other thing he does is try to catch a little bit of the live chat that's going on during the live show. And that lets him actually ask me questions, repeat those to me that you might have. Put those all in caps. Now you're going to notice some people on the live chat with little wrenches next to their name and they're going to be like different colored butterflies. Those are our moderators and they're here to pollinate help and kindness to you all. And what they'll basically do is you might have a question for which we have a lot of answers and they'll start sharing video links with you with a thousand free art videos. It can be a lot to search it depending on how I decided to name everything. You know, you might be like, I don't know what this woman tagged these things as. So they'll help you find any of that content so you can change fur colors or backgrounds or mix something or do some of that stuff that we might have had going. Are you guys ready to just get into this lesson? Mm, oh, yeah. There's, and there's lots of people. There, this, is, this is a highly anticipated rat. I was really surprised. I actually wasn't sure what the response about doing a rat was going to be. And I was so happy that so many rap fans came out and were like, yay, I'm really glad we're painting this. So I feel very supported by that and I appreciate it. And I'm not going to let you down. I think we're going to make a great painting together. Mm. All right. So to that end, I have the materials. And I have my reference here. The one I'm going to want you guys to print out is this one here. And I do highly think you should take the time to print out your reference. It will really help you paint this, okay? Mm. We're not going to grid right, right away. We're going to get some color on there and then grid it out and draw on a rat. Now, we like to do wishes and intentions, thoughts and ideas to put out into the universe. to just, I don't know, increase the positivity of the world around us. And so for Stephanie, her basic wish is to just breathe a little bit easier. <laughs> She'd mm -hmm. just like to have clear airways. Um, our own Karen is wishing for amazing, brilliant Dr. Cox level doctors. They're like those geniuses, you know, uh, for a good outcome on a, on a surgery for her husband. Alice is a better life cure and understanding for Alzheimer's. Her mom's going through that right now. And she just wants to see that the, the quality of life just improve for everybody. Yeah. Shauna to fully hear, heal and be back to painting from a back surgery. And also Kai, who is also recovering from back surgery. They both would just like to be healed and back to themselves. Um, uh, Charlotte it would like to be free from pain. She's been going through a lot of pain. And Tammy is kindness and compassion for those dealing with depression. I certainly can relate to that. And Kim, a good job interviewing everything going well in the job realm for her husband. 9 by 12 surface. Get these at Michael's. They're inexpensive. They're not like better or worse than anything. They're just there and they store really well if you do a lot of paintings like I do. Um, Thalo Blue. Quinacridone, magenta, yellow, ochre, cad yellow, burnt sienna, Mars black, dioxazine purple, phthalo green, and titanium white are the colors today. I have a ultramarine put to the side just in case. Yeah. It's my just in case ultramarine. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my background color. So I'm going to have, I think it's going to be about two parts quinacridone to one part titanium white, and I'm gonna make a slightly more tinted background color. So it's gonna be like a solid pink. And I'm gonna thoroughly mix these together because I'll need to do a very solid coating to get the effect we're looking for. So sometimes we like to loosely mix things. That's when the colors are still very marbled on the brush, on the palette, on the canvas. 
and sometimes we like to thoroughly mix and that's when they're fully incorporated making a whole new color or hue so that's what we're doing right now we're mixing them up if you've never seen this tool before this is called an artist knife or palette knife um, they come in plastic and metal the plastics a lot less expensive this is from my own art sherpa line but you can find these anywhere and you should pay anywhere from like three to six dollars no more than six dollars for that out there i like to tell you guys like what to pay now because sometimes the amazon links they raise the cost of goods there yeah if it's on a video <laughs> and i should let you know i'm not the vendor it's not me but unfortunately you know sometimes that happens so definitely definitely always shop a sale shop the good values now i'm using a number 30 bright here and i'm going to just paint the whole canvas this solid pink once or twice depending on the coverage that i get mm. probably to get a really finished look you're going to want to do it twice two coats right if you're painting a house two coats it's a two coat job yeah you got to get that super saturated uh very covered solid pink effect that's to right it. you'll also find that doing the coats um really helps improve even economical dollar store canvas surfaces because once the thing is fully covered in an acrylic, all the other acrylic sticks to it really well. And sometimes getting that first coverage on a canvas can be challenging on some of the less expensive ones, but honestly, I've seen it happen on pricier ones too. It's a coating issue. Lots of fixes for that, but this is just one of the easy ones. Now, mm -hmm. to make sure that the next coat sticks to the first coat really well, I'm going to need to dry it. Are you? Yes, I am. And John's going to give you our PSA about color shift. I wonder what I'll talk about. <laughs> so, if you're joining us for the first time or not, you should know about color shift. And that's something that happens when you um, apply heat to your paint, especially. Um, acrylic paint doesn't uh, respond well to heat. It's a plastic polymer-based thing and so uh, heat can cause it to accelerate oxidization and have problems especially in student paints now your pro paints are not nearly as subject to this which is why you'll sometimes see cinnamon use heat when she's not supposed to but there's another problem just between uh the color shift there's also that heat makes it sticky and sometimes soft so that that uh if you use heat it ends up making it so that it, your um, brush will stick to it a little bit more and make it kind of tacky. So being yeah. cool and dry is more important. Yeah. Woo, done. <laughs> it's, it's something to know. It's probably not at, like that serious, but no, it's just a it's, good thing to know because different paints are more susceptible than other paints. And we can never know what you guys are using at home. And some of the color shift on some of the lines out there is quite extreme. And some, like on Golden or Holbein, is much less. No. So. This I'm going to go second coat, but if you guys look in on this, you can see it's streaky, can't you? It's not a nice finish. Oh, yeah. And so sometimes, you know, as people who do YouTube videos, we can hide these things um, really easily via the camera. But it's important as a teacher that I let you know where this stuff is so you're not sitting at home going, I don't know why mine looks nothing like hers. Mm. Sometimes certain colors need two coats. So we're just demoing that. See, you know that that's a thing. And I have to say, I probably wouldn't talk as much about color shift, except that I don't really have anything else to talk about. I'll give you a topic on I the know. next try. And, and that's what we need to do. Like, <laughs> over the years, it's just sort of been kind of funny. Because, that's the like, one that he knows really, really well. <laughs> right. It's like, man, without thinking about it, I'll just tell you about color shift. Because that's like, you know, Cinnamon will decide that she needs to put some 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 drying on this surface and i will unexpectedly be left alone with you unexpectedly like i snuck it up like there was no chance it was going to happen per video right like yeah. you go like entire episodes no i hear him. you <laughs> <laughs> teach him let's sherpa. all sip our coffee if we have it if you have coffee it's time to sippy sippy <laughs> we have a crew of people here to paint with us hello crew Bro, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that kind of crew. No, you can I tell, the painting I'm, crew. I, I'm like, like I am. I am rowing. I'm just not rowing far brush. and fast enough. That's my issue. I am rowing. 
just not far and just not fast enough. Yeah, I'm kind of a, I, I, I row like I stroll. It's leisurely. Mm. <laughs> I leisurely ring. Okay, so while I dry this, John can talk to you about Golden Artist Colors and their blog, Just Paint, as a okay. fabulous resource for new artists. So, as she was saying, Golden Artist Colors does have this, this publication they put out called Just Paint. And I think at one point it was a, phys- a print publication, but now I believe it's just digital. But it is really good resource. This is where um, paint science nerds pub, you know, like publish their papers and their research because it's like where all the smartest people about acrylic paint talk about acrylic paint. And so if you're really into like, well, what is the saturation of pigment per uh, carrier? Man, this is where you can go and talk about that. They also talk about um, things like color shift, not nearly as much as I do, but at a much higher level. So, like, whereas I gloss the surface of it, they actually know what they're talking about. So, yes. if you want to learn actually stuff about it, it's a really good resource. Um, it's a place that I go to on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I check it all the time. I'm always reading their articles, and they're always putting out new stuff, and it's free. Yes. You know? So, excellent, excellent resource. Now, this little wonderful resource is called a T-square. And T-squares help me draw a straight line. Um, they help you draw a straight line too. And I'm going to go along and mark every one inch with my chalk here. A teeny tiny kid's chalk. This is the kind of chalk that you see on a chalkboard. Yep. Super technical stuff, this. And it's the smallest piece in the world. I think I need to buy some more pieces of chalk and sharpen them again. <laughs> but I just haven't been. But the idea is I'm going to create a grid that matches my reference grid on my canvas. And that's going to allow me to transfer the image I'm about to do uh, pretty accurately. So this is a real old trick of artists, like Renaissance level old. (laughs) So not a new concept by any means, but it's still used because it's really practical. Um. I'm going to have, first of all, when you leave me alone with a T-square, I just end up Minecrafting everything. But I have to say that Patty and Denise have been giving us some pretty amazing, generous support here in chat. Do they need some bubbles? I think that they Can you hit the bubbles while I'm gritting? Because they deserve their bubbles. And and, um, while I'm doing that, I'm going to read Denise's comment to you. Oh, I Uh, like that very much. Thank you. She says, hey, Cinnamon and John, I cannot wait to do this painting. I'll put it up right beside my Chinese calendar. It's the year of the rat. Art hugs to you and John. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And then, of course, Patty loves our heat shiftiness and bubbles talk. So <laughs> She does. <laughs> Patty's like, inform people. She's, she is a. Of the way of the color shift. <laughs> it, that, that's, <laughs> if, if there was a color shift society, she would be one of the founding members. <laughs> <laughs> we would fund and, like, raise money to prevent color shift. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. You know, these the, the patrons who come in here, you guys, uh, when you share our videos, when you help support our channel, you know, you're helping us make free art in the world. And I, we really appreciate that. We really do. More gridding. More gridding. You know, guys, as soon as I get a how to grid video up, like I had, did a how to traceable video up, I'll start fast forwarding through these. But I realize... It's kind of buddy on me if I just fast forward before I have another explanation for somebody who's new that's never seen gridding before. Because mm-hmm. it's a big assumption to assume new people would know how to do that. Yeah. So I try not to do that where I don't have to. I am going to have to make a video that's like how to make a grid <laughs> and then transfer the image. Now, um, they were asking what... How many hoot painting this is? This is, I'm going to expect this to be a high two hoot, very low three hoot. I'd say the hardest part of this painting right now is make, using this tiny piece of chalk to do this grid. Now, speaking out for rat rights here, I'm going to call this a two to three squeak, but w- because rats do not do hoots, that is something that we're very against. Oh, the Just owl factor. As a group, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. It's ya. not, you know. Yeah, rat rights. Right, Gotta... right. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this in this extreme case, we're gonna go with you know, squeaks. Squeaks. Two to three squeaks. Two to three squeaks. Squeakums. You know. 
I gritted pretty well. I have to tell you, this is maybe the most challenging grit I've ever gritted in my life because <laughs> of the teeny tiny chalk. So, uh, pro tip, use more practical chalk. Um, but we're gritted. We gritted it. It's all done. I'm going to use this longer blue chalk now for the rest of this because I just don't think I can, I can go through uh, what that blue, the other chalk did for me. <laughs> I just can't do it again. So how you make this work, right, is if you think about it, this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then you go down the same, right? So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, then when you're drawing things in, you can very easily find the row, and all you've got to do is put the objects in that row that go. So, like, on row 12, 5 across, I come here. That's right here. And that is going to be kind of from just below this corner down. That's all i got to draw. Mm. This is what's great. Row 11 on 5. It kind of swoops down like this. And then on row 10, we get to start to see some of our rat fellow. And that's kind of nice. And you can see how that comes right here. So you're really only drawing this line and this line. Sometimes what happens with drawing is that we're taking in, let's go row 12, number 8. We're taking in so much information mentally that it just overwhelms our uh, right brain. And we can't really access that part of our drawing self. So there's a lot of things that we can do to improve that. And this lets us take in smaller bits of information and therefore have a much better chance of, of getting what we need. So coming back up to row 11 down here on eight, I can see that I've got a little down and it goes up. Where does it go up? It comes through that corner. So you don't have to be able to draw like super fantastically well, right? To get a result that you want. You get a little handle in there that quickly. And it'll just really, really help you. Um, over here, if I were to say, where's the cup? If you go down to nine, and you're over to row four is where it's going to start. It comes up at a curve on the corner and comes up through eight a little bit. And the flower actually starts on eight. Hmm. So you would ta start talking about this flower coming down here on eight. Comes up a bit on seven. And then through seven, the petal comes down and back through. So even if flowers are not your friend, and many, many of you say to me, flowers are not my friend. I'm still on row two. I'm going to come back. But they can be more your friend using a gritting system because you're not having to draw complicated petals. You're just drawing a line through a square. And just try to, you know, do the same thing. So on the border between line two and three, about halfway down, the leaf is going to bend up and you can easily do that. And then you're going to come across and we're on five here. We're going to come across three and four a little bit to about the middle of four. And then behind this leaf, we'll make that little four shortened bit. So that's normally a pretty complicated thing to do. But thanks to what we've got going on here, we can do it a little easier. So across four, like that, at an angle, and then coming down a little bit, we've got another bent up leaf. Bring the bud down. And you can kind of see how we come down through here, check back into that leaf, folding that back in. This one comes through here, and where is the circle? It's right there. Very hard flower to freehand, but if you just follow your grid, you can get it in pretty easily. And it's not something you might normally just easily draw 
across. So five and six, I can start the lip down. And the lip's going to come all the way up to here. So I can go like that. Sorry, I went too far up with the lip. The lip comes down a little bit. There we go, because some of that was the shoulder of the rat. If you've got to erase anything, you just take a clean brush with clean water and remove it. It's kid's chalk. The pigment is not so high on it that you can't change your mind or fix something. So this is a fun way of doing this. Now, our little rat here, I can sit there and see that 9 through 10, his little body shape, his base body shape, how it comes up, go across 8, then down 7. And at 7, we start to see this fabulous ear, which now is not such a challenge to maybe get in there, is it? How lovely is that? So if you've been really kind of struggling with how you feel like you might, you know, be able to draw, right? Like if I'm, I know his nose is right there because it's all in square nine across line five, isn't it? He has a very good nose. It's a very good nose. And his eyes are four going across eight and nine like this. How nice is that to know that? Then over here on 10... On row four as well is the other ear. So obviously it's not a big dot for his nose. It's just mm. that's where those objects will be. And you can put them in as detailed as you want. You can be like, there's a nose here, and that's where it goes. I just like that a lot because it helps me see everything. And then I can be like, and on this little lip of a jar, I can be like, I have a paw here and a paw there. I'm not really having to stress. Then I've just got this one wonderful little flower off the edge here. Right? So over here in five, there's a petal that comes out. Goes in. And then there's a really great one that comes off four. Up here into two. And then over here on three, we can bring this back. And that in. So it's just a nice, like I say, there's a little petal right here coming up. And then we know we've got lots of little green bits back there. But it's across the four line as well that the back of the jar would happen. So we know we're going to put a bunch of green there. That's actually all we need to do to get enough of a sketch in to start painting. Man, the colors you selected for this right now, this pink and blue. I know, it's the hardest to see in the universe. Oh, it makes my cameras, it's like everything that could be unnatural and not correct is what it's telling me. Yeah. But it's that's the color you actually painted. I know. It's it's crazy. It's well, the chalk I mean, that I had right here. I gotta get it, some better chalk. Well what it is is I think that normally that blue against that pink is normally what you see when there is a uh like error in a, in an electronic, like when the dis, when an imager isn't doing it right. I I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if that were the actual case. Well I just you know so you end up seeing that weird pink or blue pixel dis, you know discoloration sometimes and it's like so i it, it but it's right it's it's that's the color you painted with now over here in i'm chat, just removing the chalk and i may even come back with pink again yeah. just to make sure that pink stays super bright since i use the blue chalk instead of white chalk all the way through but it looks like it, it could be okay i'm just gonna see where i go with it see where it goes in chat, people in are saying they love your hair. It's very Thank lopper. Thank you. Definitely very got a very lopper vibe today. I live to be on any level of lopper that could be loppered. And uh, let's see here. There were a lot of people who were surprised at how cute the rat is. So cute, right? You know, 
And I would say, you when know. you're not scurrying across your house. No, they are super cute. And, you know, I would, like, I don't want to room with them, but they are pretty nice little creatures. When you're not cohabitating. When, when you're not, yeah. I mean, like, raccoons, highly favorable creatures. Don't want to live with it, but it living around you is pretty cool. Possums, too. In nature. Possums, very good for your local uh, area. I don't know, possums. I know they are, but they scare the crowd. I, I know they're scary, but they're so good for your environment. They're good for your local area. <laughs> they reduce ticks and fleas. They're a very clean animal. They're good. Well, don't. if they reduce fire ants, you know people will fight for them hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need your armadillos. Just make sure I've got some more of that background pink. And you can see I can pretty easily make it back up. And I'll just paint this here just to make sure the background is as finished mm -hmm. as I would want it to be, right? I get it. It's about two parts magenta to one part white if you're mixing it again. And that's how you get a color again. If you pay attention to the ratios, it's pretty easy to come back and remix a match to something mm. as you need to. And this is just because I used the blue chalk, and the blue chalk had quite a lot of pigment in it. And so I'm just trying to make sure that the background look that I was so hot on with this little fellow. That you don't hue your background. Yeah. That. To make it purple. Hue over there. <laughs> that hue over there. That's kind of a cool look right there, too. <laughs> it's, it, it actually looks like a little gridded pig. <laughs> It has a bit of that going on. <laughs> now I'm going to dry this real quick so okay. all the next layers like adhere really well. Uh, if John could talk to you guys about shopping the best prices, even if there's an affiliate link, because vendors can radically and suddenly change their price, and it's important to know what list is and what 30% off list is, which is what you should pay. Like I said, all that stuff, like all definitively, and then don't have. What happened? I didn't. You kicked it, did I did. Okay. All right, there she goes. So what she was saying is be smart shoppers, be savvy shoppers, use coupons, use your sales. Um, hold on a second. The, uh, we put affiliate links for your convenience in the link in the description down below. Now that convenience does also help us keep the show operational because we do get some affiliate link back stuff to it. But those guys are really smart out there. So they know if uh, like, Sometimes they see those links and those, you know, a lot of people come through those links and it may cause the prices to jump up. So we can't control that. So keep an eye on the prices. Be a smart shopper, even out there on Amazon. So if you see someone jumping the prices up on us, feel free to go select a different supplier, a different vendor. You know, Please we're do. just trying to help you guys out. Please don't feel obligated for any of those. No, no. And always check the price. Yes, always, always, always check. Those always. Things. I think we saw a set of paint that we had recommended go up to 130 and it should be like 45. And don't overlook your local art store. Mm -mm. You know, that's a great place. And I highly recommend them because you can bring the product back and talk to another human. And talking to another human is always helpful when it comes to that. It is, especially in supplies like this. So local art store, don't forget it. And Michael's has good coupons. So I'm going to take a little of my pink. And I'm going to work it into my white. And I'm going to add just a smidge of my yellow ochre to it. I want it to still have a distinctly pink hue. And the reason for that is, is that when you have very white porcelain, as we do here. We do? I have not seen any white porcelain in our house. In, in this cup oh, on the right. painting. It will reflect what's around it. And so one of the reasons that you know that this was not a Photoshop image is that the, the reflections on the cup yeah. go very well with the environment. So it's just important when you're trying to get that really nice look. You go, oh, yeah, that would definitely reflect into this. And so right here, and now I'm just using a number 10 Cambridge Bright. You could use any Bright you have. This was just out on my easel, and so I grabbed it. it there was not like some fabulous, fantastic plan for why it was there. It just is there. I'm going to try to put a little bit right here again, just sort of under this handle. Definitely a value um, above what we're seeing in the background, but just something with a little bit of pink. That was pretty good. Mm. I'm going to rinse out. Now, looking at this, there's also some interesting blue uh, kind of like low lights on there. So I'm going to take... 
Wow, that's like all covered with soapy water. I don't get where that came from at bubbles? all. Bubbles? Maybe it was the bubbles. They, the, but like if they all came to land on the thing, <laughs> all of them. It was a bubble attractor. I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and my black, and it makes a bit of a Payne's gray. And I'm going to add those two together. And this is going to give me some of my shadow values. And I'm going to come right here. And bring that down. Across. Maybe a little bit right here. Where we might have a little pause, right? And I'll add a little more white. Bring that in. So we have a shadow right there and a little white at the top. The reason that I'm going to paint the cup first is because when you do any artwork from a photograph, you kind of want to look at the order of operations that's happening. The order of operations. Yes, it's like my, I'm going to switch to a, a less chunky, <laughs> soapy. I'm going to just get a different bright. This time it's a number eight. I'm just getting a different bright. Not all that interesting, but. Slightly smaller? Slightly smaller and less uh, soapy. I'm going to take this kind of mix with like a lot of yellow. Come Maybe on it was here. washed and not rinsed. Yeah, something happened. That's what it probably is, is it was washed and not rinsed. So you dipped it in the water and it activated all the soapiness. That's, that's what happened. And Ew! I am doing these different values. This is the yellow ochre in the white, and it's coming up underneath the handle. That's because we're talking a bit about these different values and the hues. So we're always kind of dancing between values and hues in our painting. And how light or dark something is. And then also the color that it is. This is the dance that we must do. Now I'm going to get a little more of that. Here and maybe even a little cad yellow kind of mixed in there. Mix that very loosely across. Continue to get white. And I will. Kind of covers the pink. Starts to show us maybe some of that light reflecting. Let's get a little bit of our burnt sienna. And I'm going to grab some of my blue and black color that I had here to kind of desaturate it, make it not quite as bright, and come across the mug with a line of that. And I'm going to come, the area in the back of the mug, where I know I'm going to be putting some green flowers and stuff, I will definitely put that in a darker value. Can you guys see that? Yeah. This will be in a very dark value. Even though many, many plants... Many, many are going to be there. Got a little more of my brown. I'll come into that. And that's just that first pass. What happens to new painters when they're first painting is there's this going on. It's streaky. Um, it looks unresolved. And you start to feel like, oh, well, this is never going to come together. But what we're actually looking at is what we call an underpainting. And all you've got to do as a new artist is just to continue hanging with, with, with me and doing the layers as I do them. And what you're going to see is that somewhere around to the two-third mark of the painting, and anyone who's been here a minute will tell you this is true, all of a sudden a painting happens, like almost out of the blue, mm. almost magic. But you got to get through these kind of awkward stages. Now I'm going to get a picture of this stage. Okay. Like you do. I'll let them take a I might even... Um, uh, Ask John for a uh, reheat on my coffee, possibly. Yeah. Now I'm going to take a quick look at this while they're doing that. Okay, cool. Jump back over there so they're not. You can really see the 
that as I zoom in on it, that the um, these stages, but it really is blocky, mm -hmm. you know. And that's just important to know, like, oh, it's going to be blocky right now. If you know it, it won't stress you out. If you don't know it, it's very stressful. I'm grabbing a little bit of that shadow color, and I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to very neatly make little downward strokes. And it talks about this sharp ish edge to the cup. And again, right here. Quite nice. I'm going to get quite a lot more white on there, but it's not pure white. I very, I reserve my brightest white to the very end. Oh, yes, definitely. Thank you, baby. Huh? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Is that a new thing? I love that. Adding a little highlight right here. Kind of coming up into that area of the mug that might be a little more in shadow. I'm going to come over into the yellow. And so this is much lighter, right? It is all that. And we're going to just keep pulling that out there and creating that beautiful, thick, rich sense of paint. I'm just painting and coating that and letting that really brighten there. Oh, thank you, baby. And I'm going to come across here with a bit of that blue cast white. Maybe even a little bit at the bottom. See, it's a little bit blue cast. So we're playing those whites, which are yellow cast and blue cast. And then even a little pink cast, right? But now you can see as the paint builds up, it gets to be like a really gorgeous painterly piece. And maybe even get a little black into that so it's a little grayed back because uh, yellow ochre can be quite saturated, can't it? I'm also going to grab a little bit of purple. That's a thing about Doc's purple is it just really overpowers your stuff in about a second. Mm. So you've got to be aware of that. I'm going to put that here because what would be reflecting a little bit on the, a little bit of blue in that. These would reflect back on that cup. And you're always just trying to figure out how to get between those two things, you know, how the reflection is working. I'm pulling a little warmed pink through there. And then we'll make sure that the values are transitioning well across the mug. So it's amazing how a white cup is so not white. Yeah. I think that's extraordinary. How a white cup, I'm going to grab some pink, is so not white. A little pink patch right there. And I'm already loving this, like, more oh, yeah. so it's much. Really it's cute. just so pretty. And that's fun. That's the fun. Is the fun, is the fun, is the fun. The most fun of the fun. Did a little burnt sienna. I've got a lot of paw to do there, so. I like to rinse out, make sure that everything 
is, you know, where I want it to be. And I'm going to grab some of my white. Minus this hair that wants to get into my painting. Mm. And put that right here. Kind of more focused and bright. And there we go. We painted this really gorgeous. Little mug. You have a little cup. Rat containment go. unit. This is where he's sitting today. We don't blame him. He is waiting for the Disney ride to start. He is waiting for the Disney ride to start. <laughs> this cup should be spinning. Go, 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 go. Now this little value here could be a little bit lighter, so I'm going to take what it is, and I'm going to get some white into it. And I am going to keep it a shadow. It just should be a little bit lighter than it is. Hmm. And I'm always, like, checking those things. And just bring a lighter value to the top of it to make sure that it's going Ooh, that There we go. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Yeah, that's what we do. You just go too dark, you too light, more yellow, more pink, more... What colors can I see in this reflection? You subdued it. I subdued it. Tame the painting. I say, let's do some bubbles and sip some coffee because we tame the painting. Tame painting dance. All right. I'm a bad answer. I'm a bad dancer. It's all good. We go That's together. Right. Bad dancer, bad answer. I'm going to take a nice picture at this stage. Okay. You're going to walk over there and or instead of looking at the back of your head, we'll go look at the painting. Okay, that would appreciate that because the back of my head's crazy today. No, you just have selected to have some, what do they call that, uh, uh, some Cindy hair. And Cindy hair can be big and <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> it can It can look like... Is it everywhere? <laughs> seagulls have come and visited you. Seagulls have come and visited me and lived in my hair. That's what's happened. That's happened. A flock of them. A whole flock of the seagulls. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to grab, I'm going to also want a number four round out here. And I'll keep working with this number eight on my little mousy mouse. Now, something to think about is that... Um, there's this order of how we how we have to paint things. So we got to do the cup because the feet are over the cup, right? Yep. And then we have to do the mouse because the mouse is in the cup. And then once the mouse is in the cup, I can put the greenery. Mm -hmm. And once I put the greenery, I can do the flowers. And then maybe is it an ear? Is it... Exactly. Oh, I guess it's, I guess that little green thing's in front of his ear, isn't it? It's yeah. hard to tell. You have to just you have to look at where is it in relationship to this his little his little self. I'm all emotionally invested. Attached to it. I'm in gonna the, add a little bird sienna to my brown and my bird sienna to my blue and black mix. Because we're gonna be doing his fabulous gray fur. And it's going to be the darkest inside the pot coming across here. We don't see all of him, but we know all of him is there. If that makes sense. Then as we're going to come up, we're going to definitely, definitely continue keeping that gray fur. We'll come up to the top. I'm going to just put in a little bit of the first part of his gray. And I'm going to leave some thought of where the eyes are maybe just because, you know, well, I can just put them in. It's pretty easy. This gray right here. Ugh. And that gray value. And then it's going to get a little lighter. And sometimes it even gets a little of this kind of yellow ochre into it. Grab your shadow. There you go. And through here. You're going to have to come in and some of that and then if I want to get back into the gray I just pull some gray and I know I've got a paw to pull forward up here but I've got to get these base values in so a lot of times in acrylic painting what we're doing is we're getting in base values these these baseline colors how's everybody doing today good let's start talking about the ear now the ear has got a little more yellow and a little more of that kind of Pink in it, so I definitely want to grab those things. 
We're just starting to talk about it. There's some delicate work to be done, but I just want to say something kind of in this range. I love painting mice. I've uh, done it before. I will probably do it again. Mice painting will happen. I'm working my yellow ochre and my quinacridone. Now I am going to come back into the nose, but I just want to make sure I've got this sort of base value. And then if I get into my gray, and it come forward and say that that's happened there. And then we're going to like to chip in his little face. Chip it in. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not mad at you already. <laughs> Don't be like, she's so mad. I'm not so mad. Let's add a little highlight here where we know we're going to be putting the eye in the side of the face because that would be a little bit highlighted. So now we have this cute little mouse sort of happening here. Is beginning to happen anyways. Let's get our number four round out. And I'm going to start working these different little values. A lot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come under the ear. And then under here just to make sure that there's some up over the ear. And pull in the gray bit of ear that tucks into his face. Can you see how we did that? Come around this little outside edge. And a little bit lighter over here, but in that same range. Yeah. It's how Amy easy it is. It's just, it's just layer, layer. Like, so you can see it's all kind of blocky. Take that in. What Amy I'm doing when I step back, if you're brand, brand new to the channel, is if I haven't pre-painted something, yeah. I, try, I try to always get step-by-step step for you guys now. You're getting a picture. I'm getting those pictures so that I can build a step by step. So when you're painting along, you're not trying to get to the end result that you see in the picture in picture. You're just trying to get to the next stage. Step three or step five or step six. So Amy would like to vote to name this guy Gus. Gus it is, Amy. It's Gus. Gus. Let's celebrate the Gus. Gus. Gus, 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 You're bubble happy today. Gus, 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 You got your bubbles on. Gus, 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 Gus. My kids get so annoyed at this. Thank you all for putting up with me. My daughter's like, please, you have to stop. You have to stop. My friends, they can see me in public. I'm like, I can't stop. It's not possible. Okay, so. We're going to start pulling in a little, a little light, a little thoughtfulness in the air. So I'm going to grab a little of my cad yellow and my yellow ochre. And I'm going to smidge some of my quinacridone into it. It's kind of a nice gold color. And we're going to come right here. Get the top of the ear like that. Over here. Do it again because sometimes a little bit of light gets to the ear, doesn't it? It just does. It's what it do. What it do. So, Laura was asking a really here. good question here. I would love to answer her question. So Laura, and I get this, is having a hard time to know how to let go and paint loose because she says that she's, she's how do I get over wanting to just to look, make it look just like the picture? That drive to realism. How do, how do you let go of that? What I found is, and it's why I started Acrylic April, is that's maybe, there's a couple things that are really hard for artists to create voice, in other words, a unique style or signature way of painting that you recognize as them. And you see it in authors and musicians, artists have it too. And the other one is like how to loosen up in their painting, how to edit out all the brush strokes yet still retain what the painting needs to, to be engaging and wonderful. And 
in my experience, you got exhausted out of people. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I started that program, and I and I have the Acrylic April group, and, and we did one yesterday, and you just paint every day. If Mark Bergeron's here right now, I think he's on painting three something. I think I've seen something. him in here, yeah. It, it's on a lot, and it's just about, and he can talk about it too in chat about what his experience has been, but somewhere along the way, you get out of your own way. You get out of your own head. You're just tired. You've just got to get this daily painting out. And you're just going to get some value and some color and some stuff up there. And there's these weird arcs, and we talk about it a lot in that daily painting. And for some people, it's 30. They start to break down and loosen up. Some people, it's 60. Pretty much everybody starts to crack at around 90. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even the most resilient will start to crack because you have to start making little decisions about the paintings that are looser and lighter and not as controlled. And there's nothing wrong with being controlled. Fabulous artists are controlled. It's, but knowing how to loosen up tells you a lot about value and color and how things happen. Yeah. So it's worthwhile to your day. For sure. If that makes sense. So I'm going to get a little of my pink and my yellow together. I like them so much. And we'll reveal the color with a titch of white. And right here on the nose, right here at the center, we'll start to talk about his interesting little nose shape. And it is an interesting little nose shape, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite pink. No, it's not nothing. He does have an interesting nose shape, and I'm going to get a little more white. And maybe on this side, I will. You know, make sure that there's a little more white over there. And then I know that there's a bit here. And then a little bit there. We're just trying to capture those planes. We're just thinking about those planes. And I'll get some just more pink. And sometimes it's just about capturing what we've got going on. Now this comes down here and we've got that cute little opening and I love the cute little opening that he has. It does it so much. I'm going to get some white into this and you want to keep the pink feel to it. You really need to keep that kind of pink and ochre happening because that shows the skin underneath. I'm going to just come here with some of that. Isn't it cute? Starting to think about his little nose. Mm -hmm. We're just thinking about it right now. We haven't really like worked out the whole thing. You get a dark value. And I'm going to come here. And put in a little bit of that dark value there. Because that's what he's got going on. It shapes up there. Now I'm going to take my black and blue again. And my burnt sienna, which is making this fabulous gray fur color. And make the light, light value of gray fur. Square his little muzzle there. And this is a bit across the top, too, and sort of halfway up. Because there's this invisible line that's going to come down his face, down his skull here. I don't know if you guys are aware of those yet. But you, d whenever you're doing a human face, an animal face, if you bisect the round ball that's the skull, down the center line and you mentally turn it in your head, the center line between the ears, the eyes, the nose, the features, you'll start to see it goes into a perspective. So if it's straight on, it'll be right there. And then as you move it over to three quarter, it kind of ekes its way over to the side. Hmm. It squeaks its way over to the it side. It squeaks its way over to the side. Yes, exactly. That is what it does. Now, want to know where to put his ears? Yes. I mean, his eyes, look at look at the eyes. They run along the line, this top line of the eyes. I will kind of try to mention it by going like that. Hmm. 
just so you can see it. Don't make the whole line. I just want you guys to see it. All right, but that lets you know, all right, well, the top of his eye should be right about there, and then it kind of comes out. It's going to be a beautiful black little bead. I'm going to just kind of work this here. And his little arm coming forward, it's going to be in a little bit of a darker space, but his outer part of it will be a little bit lightened. See how we're done? A little mm -hmm. bit loosely lightening that outer part. So we're getting some more of his shape. And then up here at the top, there's another little lighter area. Some little fur. Hey, fur, fur. And he says, yeah, okay, I see you. But do you understand me? Hmm. Now coming in here, we do see the eye again rounded out, but it pulls forward almost like a sesame seed. See the sesame seed? Yeah. So we want to definitely pull that forward like a sesame seed. And we'll put a little light area above the eye. Sort of show that space. So we're just again breaking his planes down. And like a little more blue in my gray. I think it's just sort of nice on his fur. And so then it's about trying to find, you know, the values that shape out his head. How dark is it? How light is it? Is it darker? Is it lighter? Does it have more blue? Does it have more black to it? I'm gonna bring this across here and then around. Just bring it up here. Make it a little bit lighter as it comes up. And I'll just go ahead and notice that I'm so, sort of touching my brush, kind of implying some fur. I'm not painting every individual hair. Not every individual hair. Just starting to talk about these planes of the face. And he's starting to come together, isn't he? Oh, yeah. So pretty. He's so cute. All right, I'm really proud of this one. This is Gus the Rat. Gus. Gus gives us no guff. Gus is a very helpful rat. And this is a very pretty painting. It's going to look good, too. So fun to do. Now, this gray, if I were to pull it into some white and pink, right? I'd kind of be a little bit about what I might be having go on here. And I've just got to find the value. You just don't want to lose the pink tone to it as you pull it forward because that pink tone will forever kind of be in there. And I'm implying maybe some of the texture without trying to get every single little dot, every single little thing in there. You want everything. You want most of the things. Come back this way. And if you need to get more into the pink, you can because it's right here, right? I almost missed it here. But Laura sent a, a lovely little message here to us. It says, thank you. Um, she's talking about painting loosely and your advice. And she says, I hope I can get there. It was acrylic April that helped made me tighten up, lol. And so she <laughs> she just, she, she's a patron support here in chat. So thank you, Laura. I got to really... bubble that. Oh, yeah. Maybe you're a 60-day breakdown, girl. I don't know what, what it is when you write me and going, I can't do it anymore. I have to just take out some of the lines. This is for Gus the Rat. Gus the Rat. The cutie cutie rat. He is the rat of the year. It's the tw I shouldn't even do this. But I'm going to anyway. So that's <laughs> happening. Y'all know I'm not going to stop, right? Like, it's not stoppable. It happens even when you're not here. John will tell you, it happens even when you're not here. It's true. Now I'm going to take a little of my yellow and pink kind of together. Creating that wonderful 
This, by the way, if you have a white poodle, works. It's just whatever white animal you have that has very light skin. This is very effective. The year of the poodle. Yeah. A little bit of a light color in that pink right there. And just a little bit on this side right here. As we're going forward. I like that. I like the color so much. I might pop some up in the ears. Because it's just a nice color. And sometimes when you have a nice color, you're like, you know, this is a very nice color. And it should continue on past what I'm doing here. And then you're like, why am I doing it? It's there and I can. Pulling this in a bit. And then as I come back, right, I've got that little bit of gray that I can start to talk about. Even though this is lighter, down here it's clearly lighter. It's still in shadow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it starts to cool. And then as we come in, right here, Looking for those places that I can put that. So what I've got is this really interesting sort of downward fur space, and I need to get the grain to it, but it's like it comes down off the chin kind of like this. And I've got to make sure that I've got that well done. So even when I come back into here and I grab it, make my darker color, and that might have some even black in it. Make sure that it comes under the chin. And brings that back. Wow, I really like that little mouth. Yeah, just getting the positioning of his little head correct. Now, he's got this little arm foot coming out. That happens. It does. It happens so cute. It's super cute. So, kind of under here, and it's all of this. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bend that out. And I'm going to pull this here, and we're going to start to put his little arm that comes out over there. And as we are more and more in the light, I can make sure that that outer part of the fur that was in the light can look a little more in the light. And then what do we got in the pink paw? So you notice that I just went with that fur color right into the pink paw color because it actually creates... The weird little purple that starts his pot. Now, this, if you've never ever been attentive to the rat's paw before, you'd be really shocked at how delicate their little, their little hands are, aren't you? I am. I, I, I actually kind of know. Did, Did you, you have a rat as a kid? Well, no, but um, in as far as mammals go, you know, kind of. Did you know that raccoons? Can actually see with their hands? No. That's, I'm freaked out now. But they have so they have very, very sensitive hands, and in the dark, they can form spatial images of space based on the touch of their hand. So they can really, it, it's like they can see using their hand. And so in dead darkness, they can actually just have images of things and know things, and they can walk. It was a little sorts. scary and also awesome at the same time. It I is. just grabbed some more magenta and Rats have similarly sensitive hands. It'll, they're not just they're not just paws that run on. They're not just the paws they run on. Nope. So I'm gonna they're come like, here and Gus is like these paws are made for art. And Gus does support arts, the arts, and he he he's very supportive of artists everywhere. We would also like to remind you that this is decoration, not garnish. <laughs> He's the decor, not a garnish. Well, these flowers here, 
could 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 be misconstrued. It's more than you think. Yeah. I'm gonna get a little of this pink in there. So we're gonna create some a few little value sh shadows and stuff. Some little. Oh, I've got to pop a pink here, or this part of my little finger is maybe delicate and worked out this way. As you do. You know, sometimes do. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing we were doing around his face, is just trying to find those little values. Oh, that are kind of awesome. Now I got the gray here, and I'm going to keep adding a little white to this. Keep adding a little white to this. I don't need to really get a smaller brush. The number four is going to get me through. Very much going to get me through. A little bit on the outside of his paw here. Now that's going. Got a little pot, doesn't he? Yeah. I'm going to get a little bit of my black and brown into this. My magenta. We're going to try to make kind of an interesting shadow color. So right under here. And then on the inside of that. A little contrast line. Yeah, and we kind of like define the little nails and things that might be happening for him. And let's go under here. And talk a little bit about that little shadow under his arm. See how now we have a little shadow under his arm? Mm hmm You can even bring a little of that shadow right here. Kind of down a bit. We're just saying, hey! He's got a cute little forward <laughs> thing. Sorry, he's real cute. <laughs> just says it. He really is cute. Oh, that's too much. Don't do that. Too much? Too much. Don't do it. So what I'm going to do, I did that. I'm going to come back with my grain. I'm going to... Okay. Just remove it. So now you're between their little steps there. Mm-hmm. I'm on so someone was asking, there's a couple things. I here. could sip some coffee and answer some questions. So someone was asking, uh, what is with the money and stuff that keeps popping up in chat? Oh. Um, so they have this thing on YouTube called Super Chat and it lets you get stickers and emojis and you can send a special message to us and you can send a patronage to us, like a single time patronage. So if you're like, that's the most awesome technique I've ever seen in my life. I'm not suggesting this happen today. But if you're like, that's the most awesome technique I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and it's changed everything for me. And I just have to say thank you in some sort of monetary fashion. But I'm at home on my computer. That is that's the way you could do that. And now Linda, who Linda hey, Harvey, Linda. Just, she just did support us there. So thank Ooh, you. very. Bubbles. She's looking forward. She's looking forward to Acrylic April. But oh, what I yes. also want to say is to all, there's a lot of patrons who can't support us financially. And what I would say is that you are not alone. And there are many, many ways that you can support us outside of the financial method. So I want to say this, and I think this is true just kind of globally, but it's certainly true in our community. Yes. The people who patron, patron to help us make sure that uh, everybody gets free art education and yep. that it's more accessible and more affordable. And um ton of our community couldn't possibly patron what they give likes uh they share videos but they do something even more important Can i tell you what the most important thing to patron is what's that they get into the groups they get onto the web page and they comment positively on other people's art they lift others up that's for me is the big patronage in our community is when uh and i, I like to call it the mona effect <laughs> <laughs> or angela maxwell they're just people who uh, Ann Keel, they just take time to say love, love, love. Uh, Rachel Miller, there's just a bunch. I could just go on the listless list. And and that's and it's a big deal. So all of it's a big deal. And it's working all those pieces together. Yeah. That is really critical. I'm going to bubble that again because that yeah, just felt and really good. I, so And definitely the shares and the dragging your friends and family to mm -hmm. be sure of a thing and being like on. If you're, you know, you're out there, you tag it back to me. Those things all help me. Absolutely. So thank you guys. Thank you for being part of our community. Thank you for being part of our lives and part of our family. Texas We love having you guys here with us. So I'm going to have to clean. Uh, you know what? I didn't think about the canvases that were on the photo table. 
yeah. and covered in bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm going to go here. That's crazy. Back into that really awesome sort of shadowy color that I had. And what I'm just trying to do here is just help a, a shape like maybe like the nails or some of the shape of the delicate, delicateness of the hands. A little pause as they are, you know. Because sometimes it's hard, right, to get that delicateness out. Yeah. Add a little kind of knuckle value right there. Super happy with those little paws. Now, this little paw got a little bit long. This little paw got a little bit long. <laughs> what do we do about that? We paint it way, 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 way. Look at that. We don't stress. We just paint the little extra long nail away. Mm -hmm. So it's just perfect. The eyes I'm super excited about. And I'm going to start out with a black and blue. We're going to come here and go. There we go. That's a good little eye. Got his little seed eyes. And then this eye kind of forward, but is very nice and out in that foreshortened space. There we go. It's got little eyes, guys. You know what happens when he's got little eyes? You're going to get a little of your blue. And a good bit of your white. You're going to make this sort of very bright blue color. Come over the eye. Under a bit and down. Look at that. It's the beginning of the reflection. So when you're painting an animal with a very dark eye, this sort of tonality, put it at the top of that eye, you'll see starts to bring that eye forward. Then I'm going to come in and get some more white, not pure white, but more white. Come on the outside edge and there. And then also maybe right here. And what that's going to do is just pull enough of the reflection on those eyes that they are bright and they are gorgeous and you love them. Get a little bit of your black, your deepest value. Don't use a lot of black on this fellow. But if you were going to use a lot of black, and I am going to do the whiskers today. If you guys are wondering, I'm going to just take the time and do the whiskers. Because I figured, like, once we don't do enough of these little guys that I wouldn't, like, uh, make sure that all the stuff is there. there we go. Oh, this is turning out great. Those eyes just they make pop. it pop, 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 Just a touch in the nose. Notice how little that was? That was very little, wasn't it? <laughs> and that's important. It's got to be a little bit. You know, you want to do a little, little bit. Maybe a little more yellow into that, right? It's because it's quite bright and trying to find some nice little reflections. I'm going to put a little bit on the front of the little claws a couple places. Now yeah, we're done. Mm -hmm. Just to help those look like they're cute and forward and all the things that we want. Now, we've got a back flower, a bunch of greenery, and forward flowers. And so we've got to start getting in some of the some of the stuff that's there. And I'm going to take my burnt well, sienna before. and my phthalo green, because phthalo green is really, 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 really transparent. Can you, can you, can you give me a bubble before you do? I can. Because we... Aim, I can sip I think, my coffee and give you a bubble. Because I think, let's see, it's Patty and Christine. I, they just like how cute he is. They Actually, that is exactly what it was. That Christine sent this gigantic heart hugging. I think it's a, it's either a, a little 
a little fox or a raccoon. I'm a raccoon. Sure. I'm fox. gonna move these paintings. <laughs> it's a little fox hugging a heart, saying, and it's a sticker saying "I love you." And Patty says she's loving, loving this painting. Yeah. So. I'm loving him too. There's that's Super to, cute. to to Mr. Gus. What are you doing over there? I'm taking a picture of Mr. Gus, and I also was getting the uh, acrylic April studies out of the way so that they're still good by April. Of our Gus the Rat. Yes, Gus he's, the Rat. He's turned out pretty. He is cute, isn't he? Just the the sauce of awesome. He's the sauce of the awesome, y'all. And we don't we haven't even put these adorable little purple flowers in. I've got to start taking one of these. It's in focus. Yeah. Yeah, because I keep you keep taking out of focus photos. Yeah, I do. I'm like, I don't need ah! <laughs> just whatever. It's fine. <laughs> so I've got my brown. And my green together, it makes a nice deep value. i am still got my number four round. And so I'm going to come up here and I'll make a stroke down and over. And you see it kind of makes a cool, interesting, weird shape. I'm trying to make these interesting, quite structural leaves. Right up to that. I'll have to add some. I'll have to do the purple and then add some more green, but right now I want to get this stuff in. <laughs> what color is your hair? Uh it is the um slime crime bubblegum. Okay. <laughs> I get asked a lot about colors every once in a while. The color of your hair just makes me laugh. <laughs> it does. Because they're like, what color is she using? What color is she using? What color is her hair? I'm like, <laughs> lime crime. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can answer all the I have the to other tell ones. you, if you haven't used lime crime, I am not a beautician. And I definitely think it's important to talk to a beautician, especially with doing chemicals and stuff. Um, but I really love the product. Uh, it smells like, so yum. It's the most pleasant hair coloring experience I've ever had. So I highly recommend it. Probably for any of their colors. If they do natural colors, I'd probably even recommend that because it's so nice. I'm going to grab some of my green and add some yellow to it, yo. Right? So there's two ways to lighten your green. There's white, which with phthalo blue makes a fabulous mint color. <laughs> and with... Yellow, which gets you into those nice bright greens. So I'm going to just add these highlights, these pops of highlight, right? Mm -hmm. You are influencing people to what? Dye their hair. I mean, I don't want to recommend against it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> That's why I do it. You're probably influencing them to paint. That's a more direct thing. Yeah, but I mean, I'd, I'd say that's true. All right. So I'm going to add, I've made a light color with the phthalo green and yellow and white. And this is a kind of lighter value that I'm going to put in a couple places to sort of make sure that this stays interesting. I feel like he needs one more here. There we go. That's good. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Purple flower. So I'm going to take my blue over to my purple. I'm going to mix them together. And this makes like a really deep indigo. I'm going to start to paint in this fabulous, fabulous flower shape. Aubrey would like to know if you're thinking about doing any dragons soon. I am, Aubrey. There be dragons. I got a little distracted by the gnoming. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. For all you know, there'll be a, a gnome uh, who rides a dragon. At some point, yep. And we haven't even gotten into some of the cooler Asian dragons, which 
I'm, well, that's not happening because I'm going to be really honest. Right now, I'm in the middle of binging everything that Annette Marie has ever written. Mm. And I just finished the whole Sword and Stone. And I'm so into like little dragonlings oh. and dragon culture and dragons who are like, you're not even good. You don't pet me when I ask. <laughs> of all the life mates, you don't even pet me. Who pets me? The incubus pets me. <laughs> Doesn't even complain. I love that dragonling. Zwee. Everybody's okay. there fresh, and I'm like, oh, sweet. <laughs> we have, okay, like, I have no clue what she's talking about here. So, like, for all of you people who are <sighs> also in her book club. I, I think I'm alone. <laughs> I haven't seen anybody I know. Like, it doesn't, like, I think, I think only Lockery's in there with me, and I don't think she knows she is. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, well. I'm going to, but I love it. And so, yes, I'm very influenced by dragons and dragonlings and cute little dragons who are, who are sassy. They have to be sassy. Sassy dragons are awesome. Just ask Donkey. (laughs) He likes a sassy dragon. He does like him a sassy dragon, doesn't he? Donkey was very (laughs) open-minded. For a very close-minded world, Donkey was like, love is love, yo. He's a very forward-thinking individual. <laughs> he really was. But you could tell, you know. By his talking? Well, he's just singing. And the singing. And the fact that he thought the whole problem between Shrek and Fiona was stupid. Yeah, he pretty much saw was. right to the heart of everything. <laughs> Donkey was, uh, Donkey's my internal, like, Geppetto. Is he? Yeah. Because he sings J- just so much better than Geppetto ever did. True. Like true. donkey songs I sing along with. That's true, you do. So I'm taking some of my magenta and my purple together, and I'm going to add a little bit of white. And this creates sort of this lighter, warm pink. And I'm going to come here, and on the top of the flower, I'm going to start to create a couple of these values here at the top of the leaf. So it's sort of darker in the center, if you guys get a sense of that. Painting that on the outside to create some dimensionality in that leaf. And then to this end where it comes here. I'm just working these in. You know what's next? Mm. I'm going to take a little blue and some white. A little blue and white in here. A little bit right there and down the front of that leaf. Having a nice party. This is sort of what I needed today. <laughs> hmm. You all don't need it, but it's what I needed today. Very much. Yeah. I know. I, I needed to see Gus. Did you need to see Gus? Uh, yeah. I'm so pumped that, like, I actually got my little calendar out for the beginning of the year and then was like, and I will be painting him this year. Because hmm. I was ready for New Year's. Or Year of the Rat. I was like, I'm going to be ready for Year of the Rat. And I was. And I'm super proud of myself for being ready. So I'm taking a little white into that magenta mix. I'll pull this down. Now, I know I'm going to pop some green there, but I just want to make sure we can even get into the blue as I come down. See, I'm getting into the blue. Uh Uh-huh. It's about the value as well as the color of the petals. Do you happen to know what kind of flower those are? I have no clue. Oh, okay. None. Someone was None. asking. None. I looked at it, too. I was like, what are these flowers? They're so awesome. They're real. Amy is guessing it's a crocus. I thought crocus, too. I'm going to go with Amy. I think Amy could be correct. So I'm just trying to. Lighten the value with that forward petal, right? Let me get a little yellow. Lots of magenta. 
and some white. More white. I'm going to give a big art high five to Susan, white. who's supporting us out here Thank in our you. super chat. That was too much white. After she does her some more flowers, we'll do some more bubble dancing. Yeah, yeah. I can let those dry for a second, and then I'll come in and hit them with their final touches, because I'm digging. Let's bubble dance yeah. and sip our coffee, because the flowers are coming coffee in. Coffee time. Good time to photograph. It's, and look, see, I can put my little, it's Gus. Gus. And the Sherpa. Happy, what day is today? Happy Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. It's a Let's photograph where we're at. So we have a nice step by step for for everybody after. Everyone is agreeing, or I should say, not everyone. Well, I won't, I don't know. I'm not going to speak for everyone. I'm going to speak to an abundance of people in the room who seem to be agreeing that a gnome riding a dragon would be a good idea. <laughs> I can't speak for everyone, but it does seem to be. At least we can give him a reason to have his like. Universally well receptive. Yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of my magenta and some of my yellow together. And maybe a little ochre. Kind of makes this like a little orange color. We're going to come here and just peek out a little bit of that yellow that's in that flower. And a little bit more in there. Well, I like that, right? Just that little touch of color, right? Pretty terrific. Awesome. You know, and if you take phthalo blue and green and mix them, guess what you get? Turquoise. Now I'm going to take my little turquoise highlights. I'm going to just line those flowers a bit. Look at that. How fun is that, right? Yeah. Big art high five to, all, to Susan and all of the patrons out here and everyone who's helped share and comment and get the word out there for the good art vibe stuff we're doing the good art vibes nah do we have good art vibes i think we do i just like those little touches they just add a little pop and a little yum to everything back into our green yo mm -hmm. and let's make sure that we're adding some of that a couple of places to this flower. See how we've done? Yeah. And then you want to get a little of the yellow and green. Not everywhere, but it needs to be a couple places. Now this needs to dry so that we can do the next purple. Reason it has to dry, it's such a big deal, is the yellow in the green will gray the purple and take away the vibrancy. Gotcha. And you don't want to lose that. So I'm going to dry this, and John can talk to you about not setting fire to your paint. Okay. <laughs> don't set fire to your paint. Um, and what she's talking about is that there are some paint techniques out there on the Internet that suggest that you should use fire as a curing method. And that's just wrong. Just it's out and out wrong. Fire is not good for paint. Paint is not good with fire. Um, I don't. I don't know of any exception to that. So just what? avoid paint and fire all around. All around. Just. I'm not sure who said paint and fire was a good idea, but I have. I yet think to, what happened is they the resin artists uh, who use resins in pores have to use resin yeah. to pull bubbles. But this requires some material science, some yeah. like hazardous material handling, some rebreathers. Don't use fire with your paint. 
please, it's not a good idea. Not great. It's just so many other ways to find a solution around this. Fire is not it. And I <laughs> love not fire. It. I mean, this is Beavis talking to you here. I'm all about setting fire to things. It's true. <laughs> and I bought a flamethrower from Elon Musk. He did. But don't use fire. I'm mixing up some more of my blue and purple. <laughs> I think they know now. You guys okay. know? Don't I've, use I've fire? earnestly conveyed. Okay. But don't do it, seriously. I'm going to pull a little bit of that there, and I'm going to come around to the end of that petal here. So this is a little heavier on the blue, what I've got going on. And it's just so that we can feel it and see it a little more. All right. So we're going to come here and there. And you can see what I'm doing is just making sure that our petals have some dimensionality to them. Little purple and magenta going together always goes real well. Pulling these out here. This is a nice big one. It helps for the coverage if there's a little bit of white in your purple, just so you know. You just don't want to over lighten the value too much. Just making sure that we can see those petals clearly. If you need to deepen a part of it, you just come back, look, with the purple. Real loose even, it's not really something too serious. You just wanna make sure that the wonderful painting has kind of that feeling of being quite dark. Right here, makes more dark. sweeping it along that petal making that nice long brush stroke how are you guys doing good so looking good i'm gonna come here and kind of on the outside of this one the blue that into the inside of that and then I'm gonna run that wonderful and kind of run a blue down that petal they kind of run into each other so we've got mm. some really interesting open foreshortening I'm going to make some nice bright orange with my clinacridone and my magenta. But you want to add some green into it because there's this green orange underneath everything here. We'll come back with some of the other colors and the orange in it, but we just want to make sure that, that that is sort of set that way. So can you guys see where that is there? We've got oh, yeah. now darker I'm gonna go over here. values and two hues. They're about the same value, same here, but then there's some lightness. And it'll be about the same thing. We're going to use these highlights, little pops of color, little bits of whimsy mm -hmm. to make sure that we see the shape and form. So we're going to do all this, and then the very last thing, don't let me forget, we're going to show you how to do the whiskers. Now I'm going to, I'm going to get a big art high five to Patty, who supports my fire and paint are not good statement. Yeah, Patty's like, big into that too. It isn't good. And then a little it piece It isn't of, good. It isn't good. A little, a little piece of my heart goes to Brenda, who's helping me support my flamethrower habit. And uh, she's just she's a little patronage support for the flamethrower, and I appreciate that. <laughs> It's not a flamethrower. Technically. It's Elon Musk, not a flamethrower. It's, it's not. It's a s'more maker or something. They made s'mores with it when they went and picked it up. 
I, I would say that it is a uh, space heater. <laughs> no. It was a weird decision. <laughs> it was it was one of my one of my like I'm taking some of my turquoise. <laughs> weird collection items. I'm going to get a little bit lighter there. Sometimes it's nice. I get a little yellow into it so that when I come on this edge with the white and the yellow, it really kind of helps it pop. Like sort of that. Like real life Easter egg I had to go get. Yes. Real life Easter egg that you had to go get. <laughs> well, I mean. Had to go get. Yes. So, yeah, that's our life. <laughs> I am using this kind of turquoise to help me define these beautiful pops of outline on these amazing petals. And you can see that how that really helps them come together. Now this lovely one actually curves back and tucks into his friends right there, which I think is just charming. And this comes and tucks back like that. Look how nice that's looking now, that forward facing flower. My two cents is that it's really great then at this stage to get a little pink involved. Pull some there. Couple pieces there. And here at the end of it, the tip of it, I'm gonna bring that back. Isn't that nice? Pulling that flower back in. I think I'm gonna get a little more of my dark purple. More white. Just trying to see those little bits of yum. Do you have your bits of yum yum? I hope so. Yeah, that's coming along here. I'm going to come along there. A little bit of that pink in there. These are little bits of pink that you sort of see reflected through these fabulous and shining through these fabulous little flowers. Now our yellow, and I may need to put out some more cad yellow because it got a little crazy. And our yellow is, for the most part, tinted with the pink. So for the first part, we'll get some nice just Solid orange and only a small amount of white. There we go. Just pulling in these little brush strokes, if you can see. And then as I'm going to come in, I'll grab a little more yellow and a little more white. These are ones that are catching just a bit more of the light. I'm going to change their little direction so we can really see them. And then if I need to, back into the darker ones. They're maybe not as focal or in the shadows. I love the inside of this little flower. I'm 
I think it's a good idea to take a little bit of the brown and this has got a tip bit of green in it. I'll bring that back into there. And then just some of the pure sienna. Just around the edge. Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. I get a little bit of my black and purple. It's because it was there. And I like to make sure that some of that value is really seen in the flower. Rinse out very, very, very good. I'm gonna pull a little bit of greenery right here, just for balance. He likes it. Rinsed vigorously. You heard that vigorous rinse, right? Mm -hmm. A little yellow, a little white. Pure cat yellow, pure white. Very powerful. Just some of these little colors in here. Not all of them, but look what happens when you put them on a few. Just creates that sense of wonder, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. So I'm happy with my flowers. I'm happy with my mouse. I'm happy with everything here. Now, last bit, fluid paint and a number one monogram liner. If you're going to do the whiskers, have the tools. <laughs> <laughs> Trick will be keeping things as light as possible on your hand pressure, about not dragging your hand through paint. So you have to make a strategy about like, I'm going to do these. I'm probably going to turn the canvas and I'm going to be working from the top down. I've got a number one monogram liner. I barely load any white, and I go like that. Ooh. No vision enhancers needed on that one. Just barely dip in the paint. Just starting to put those little whiskers out. And the reason that I want to do this for you guys is I get asked about this a lot. How this would get done. I might have I might turn this at a kind of corner angle. See how we're doing those? Yeah. Getting those little whiskers in. Rinse out regularly, dry off. And you have to dry way up the handle of the brush. Otherwise, when you rinse out, a hidden drop will sneak down your brush and go bloop on your paint. Oh yeah. And it will ruin your day. While you're adding all those beautiful little details, I'm going to say thank you to Madeline, who supported us with a really cool thank you um, sticker, little pair, giving us a little thank you. So thank you for being thank part of our community you. and helping us do this thing here on YouTube. We Couldn't do it without you guys. How's that looking? Do we have some whiskers on one side? Can you guys see them? Yes. Yes. All right, let's bubble Madeleine and then finish all the right. whiskers. Thank you, Madeleine. We're halfway Again, through. Thank you, all of you guys. Like thank lashes. You. Probably one side of the face is easier than the other. <laughs> so, uh, Andrea was saying, why doesn't my liner brush hold enough paint to make the whole whisker? Are you using a number one monogram liner? Mm. Or that would be I my first question. Are you using golden fluid paint? Mm. Um. So... I got to tell you that in my experience, in the finest of lines, the tools and the products do in that particular case matter. Um, there's different ways to get it done. You know, you could use a dagger brush. You could use uh, extreme angles. You can use the monogram liners, but you want something that um, really will pull a consistent line that you're keeping your pressure on. I'm not putting a lot of paint on my brush. 
but I'm using golden fluid paint and it's packed, packed, packed with pigment. So if I go out, I get a lot, I get a lot for my time. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and I like the Ruby Satin, but look, Escoda makes a good brush and Princeton makes a good brush and Silver makes a good brush. There's companies that make a good brush, mm -hmm. right? So what you want is something that's going to give you a fine, fine hairline. And this particular one, there's not a universal sizing, but this is a number one. And you can just see how fine it is on the point. You could also use a really quality paint pen, but I find that even that can skip across the canvas. Making little short hairs. And, and, and John will show you how much paint I have on my brush. This is how little paint. I'll zoom in on that. Yep. Just a little, little tiny bit. So that's really a big deal. And as you can see, I'm going to be much more like, woo! Fine hairs everywhere. Trying to make sure I've got nice little bits of hairs coming out. These little whiskers are flying away. Come fly away, come sail away, sail away with you. Come sail away. Away. Now, I may come in and if a line is heavy, I may lighten it a bit. Mm. You know, if I need to, I might come back in and go, oh, it's a little bit heavy, so... Remember, you can work this stuff. Hmm. Okay. If you've got some that you were like, I'm not that happy with. That turned it's out really nice. Way doable. I don't like to do the dark little dots. I feel like it creates an issue in the painting. Hmm. I just haven't had one where I was like afterwards going, oh, I'm really glad I did those little dots. Now I am going to do the exaggeration of this, though. Oh, yeah. That just makes the eyes seem a little bit wetter. It really does. And it's just an important part of it. And then I'll take my little number one monogram liner and say, this was a pretty darn successful day. Yeah, it turned out really nice. You can always do this, guys. Do the steps. Do the process. Be easy with yourself. All right, let's look at that. Oh, doesn't he look gorgeous? It turned out really nice. I like him better than the photo. Look at his cuteness. Gus, the adorable 2020 mascot. He oh, did. He turned out great. I'm really pleased with this. Thank you for spending the time today. I hope that this class unlocked a technique or an idea, maybe an art material, medium, or tool, just in some way made your painting experience easier. Now, uh, the next one we have coming up, I think, is the Loads of Love truck. You'll have to check. It's that or a really cool lantern. Just There's a bunch of, I schedule up through like the mid of February. So we got roses. We've got cute trucks. We've got one hoots to three hoots. So, you know, look ahead on the calendar. Set reminders for your favorite videos. Sign up for our text notification system, which is if you type the Art Sherpa on your phone, not into the messenger here. You go on your phone. And to the number 33222, you type the Art Sherpa and you're in the contiguous United States, mm -hmm. then uh, we can send you a text. If you are not in the contiguous United States, then on the videos, make sure you hit the reminder bell and you have your phone set Actually, to accept notifications. I think it's any U.S. based number. Any U.S. based number. Yeah. So whether you're in, Aust whether you're in uh, Hawaii or 
Alaska. You know, I think it works. It just yeah. has to be a U.S. number. So those are the two ways. And if either one of those don't work, but you got to get in our groups. <laughs> And because sometimes I will be making announcements and saying, hey, guys, we're going to be live today. So that's how you would find out and not miss things. <sighs> it's a crazy world out there. So this is the time of year to be really good to yourself. Be super forgiving of your humanity. It, we're all just people trying to get through. Be good to each other. Be giving of each other's humanity. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye.